I'm David Spiro and I manage a bunch of artists. Um, I've worked with people like Joe Walsh and Cat Stevens and uh, Dickie Betts from the Allman Brothers, the Buffalo Springfield and many others and currently working with a, a, a great new band out of Chicago called The Empty Pockets. I was one of those people sitting in front of my TV on that day that the Beatles showed up on the Ed Sullivan Show. And I was watching them play, and there's like one shot in the show where they show up, they, 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 you could see the Beatles, but over like on the side, you saw Brian Epstein. He's just standing there like this, watching his guys. And I was watching the Beatles, and I thought, you know what? I don't think I could ever be one of them, but I could be that guy on the side. And uh, that was my goal since I was 13 years old. I think the most important thing for somebody who wants to get into this business is to realize that the music business has two words. One is music and one is business. And if you don't understand the business part and all you care about is the music part, you're gonna have the same problems that artists from day one have had where they go, wow, I wrote all these songs and I have no money or I've been touring forever and I have no money. And, and it's because they didn't understand that the music business is a business. So they paid no attention to that part of it. So if you're really starting in this, I really suggest that you really do as much studying on the music part as you do on the business part. And that way you'll be covered all along. It's interesting, I've worked with a couple of different artists that have viewed social media in such opposite ways. Uh, working with Yusuf, who is Cat Stevens, he just totally embraces it. And his website to him is just another palette for him to paint. And uh, he's very active in it and he loves to you know, tweet what he's doing before the show, after the show, in the studio, whatever. And another artist I have is, is Dickie Betts from the Allman Brothers. And Dickie uh, doesn't own a computer. Um, he actually had a cell phone once, but when the battery ran out, he thought it was done, so he threw it away. So, um, you know, it, it's just the yin and yang of it that, you know, he just, he doesn't understand nor care. The first time somebody said they downloaded his song, he, th he was like, what are you talking about? And I had to say, no, no, this, that's a good thing, Dickie. This is a, this is a good thing. So, um, you know, I see the pros, and uh, I mean, I've never really seen the con of it. I just have seen people that don't actively embrace it. I've, uh, I've been really fortunate because the people that I've worked with uh, include the Eagles, Joe Walsh from the Eagles. I've, I've worked with Ringo Starr. I've worked with Paul McCartney. Uh, I've seen just about every artist I've ever wanted to see. But when I was working with Yusuf uh, on the last record, Cat Stevens, uh, he said to me one day, you know who I hear doing harmony on this song? And I said, oh, and he says, Paul McCartney. And I said, well, do you know Paul? And he said, well, I, I met him like in 1974 or something at a, at a benefit show and we shook hands on stage. Uh, so like you couldn't just call him. And he says, no, 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 I don't think he'd know who I am. So um, I, 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 I called Paul's office and I said, uh, listen, you know, uh, Yusuf would love to have him sing. And over the next like 24 hours, all of a sudden Paul's calling and saying, oh, I'd love to do that. And, we're gonna, can you do it in London on Wednesday and I've got a great studio and let's, I'll meet you there at 11 o'clock. And all of a sudden I'm in a studio with, with Cat Stevens and Paul McCartney kind of telling Paul what we're looking for on the song. And, you know, it didn't even occur to me that I was with Yusuf, you know, here's Cat Stevens, that alone would be really cool. But here, I, you know, I learned more in about six hours in the studio with Paul McCartney than in the hundreds and hundreds of hours prior to that. And it was, um, I've been on cloud nine for about three and a half years since I walked out of that studio.
I, I'm one of those people that musically is stuck up to about maybe 1978, maybe a little into the 80s, I can't remember. And I, I never really paid much attention, although things would hit me. You know, uh, the wallflowers blew me away, but you know, once again, that was like my music. And the Jayhawks, I, I would go anywhere to see the Jayhawks, but once again, you know, they were kind of like the birds and the Springfield and stuff like that. And then uh, I heard Coldplay, and I thought, wow, that's really, you know, it's... So, I mean, there's things that have excited me, but it wasn't in, in, until... And I never would have managed a new band. I, it was just not something that was like, uh, I don't need four 23-year-old kids telling me that they know more than I do, okay? I know that they do, but I didn't want to hear it. So I've stuck to my classic rock artists. Until my son came to me one day and he said, I saw this band called The Empty Pockets. They're from Chicago and he had seen them up in Detroit. And he said, you've got to see these guys. They're, they're like great. And I, I listened to them and I met with them. And, uh, and now we're here at, uh, at you know, these, uh, the, the sun, sunset sessions. Uh, and I'm so proud to bring them here and present them to so many different people. I've been really fortunate. I've been to the Grammys, I don't know, 15, 18 times, maybe more than that. I remember uh, when they were in New York and um, my dad was uh, a TV producer and uh, he was very close with B.B. King. And I, I remember the three of us going up the escalator and, I, and John Lennon was going down the escalator and I was like really excited about that. And that night, B.B. King goes up and he, he thanked my dad. He said, I'd like to thank Herman Spiro. If, uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here tonight. He drove. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that would be the highlight of my Grammy career as far as going to the Grammys. Until the other night, the Allman Brothers were receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award. And Dickie Betts, my artist, asked me if I would go accept the award on his behalf and he wanted me to keep the award, which I thought was just an amazing thing.